Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video I want to show you how to find one-sided limits just from looking at the equation of the function. Now remember with these one-sided limits we'll either be working as x approaches a value from the left side or as x approaches a value from the right side. And that little symbol right next to it, either a minus sign or a plus sign, will give us a clue whether we're doing a left-sided limit or a right-sided limit. So let's go ahead and jump into some examples. Let's see what we have. So I want to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of x squared minus 9 all over x minus 3. When it comes to computing a limit like this, uh, one of the first things you want to check is to see if there are any problems happening at that value. And actually, for this one, we get a big problem. If you try and use 3 directly, notice how you get a 0 on the bottom of your uh, function here. Now, of course, we can't divide by 0, so trying a direct substitution is simply not going to work. There are instances, however, where you might be able to simplify this into something just a little bit better. In fact, notice how the top actually factors, so we're going to break that down. This will be into x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now that's important because we can actually cancel out that extra factor. And of course, one of the biggest reasons why we can cancel this out is because we are talking about limits and x does not equal 3. We're, we're simply getting really close to 3. Okay, so if we need to evaluate this limit, it actually boils down to looking at the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of x plus 3. Now something like x plus 3 is a nice line. It has a slope of 1, goes through the y-intercept at 3. Uh, so you can end up evaluating this one-sided limit through direct substitution. Well, let's just go ahead and put, put in that 3. And the value of this limit would be 6. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at another one and see what other things we want to be aware of. In this one, we want to figure out uh, what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the square root of 3 minus 3x. Okay, now this one, it's really important that we're actually handling this using a one-sided limit uh, because if we tried to approach it from the other side, the right side, it actually would not work. Let me give you a sense of why that's happening. So the values we're approaching, as uh, you know, we're getting really close to this one from the left side, are values like, um, say, 0.98 would be a good value, maybe something like 0.998, something really close. And if you were to substitute those in for your x value, you would actually be able to get a number, you know, 3 minus uh, something uh, really close to uh, a 3. That'd be a little bit smaller. But watch what happens if you try and pick things, say, from the right side. So what would be on the right side of 1? Maybe like 1.01 uh, .01 would be on the right side. 1.0001 would be on the right side. If you try putting these values in for your x, then what you'll end up subtracting will be larger than 3. So you'll have 3 minus something larger, and you'll actually end up with imaginary values. So this particular function is only defined for values that are approaching 1 from the left side. There's actually nothing on the right side of that 1. So since we're only looking at values that are on the left side, so values that are like that, uh, we're going to go ahead and try and evaluate this thing. you can break it down a little bit by going ahead and factoring out a 3. Now as uh, x approaches 1 from the left side, this x will essentially get really, really close to 1. And when it does that, we'll have 1 minus 1. So that little piece right there wants to essentially uh, go to 0. Maybe we'll go ahead and write that in. So all of this wants to go to zero. Now if it does, uh, we can just go ahead and finish computing this. This would be the square root of three times zero, or the square root of zero, or simply zero. Uh, you can see once you get a handle on this one, you know, substitution also works out pretty good for this one. Uh, but the reason why there's a one side limit is because you can't approach it from the right side. All right, let's look at one more. This one, we're looking at uh, the value as x approaches negative 4 from the left, and we're looking at this very interesting looking function, 
It's x plus 7 multiplied by the absolute value of x plus 4 all over x plus 4. Okay, again, it's good to uh, kind of look at these and see if there's any problem areas. This one has a big problem area with the denominator of this fraction over here. If I tried to substitute in a negative 4 directly, I'd get a 0 on the bottom, and I can't divide by 0. Well, it's really tempting to try and cancel these out, but unfortunately we can't do that because they're not exactly the same. The top involves an absolute value, but the bottom does not. Well, let's kind of explore what's happening with that absolute value and the factor on the bottom to see maybe what we can do with it. Okay, so let's, let's imagine. If I'm approaching negative 4 and I'm approaching it from the left side, that means I'm using values like negative 4.1, say, or at least, you know, really close to that. And if I was to take a value like that and plug it into this portion of the function, it looks something like this. So negative 4.1 plus 4, all in absolute value, all over negative 4.1 plus 4. Okay, things look uh, pretty similar so far. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify. So up top here, negative 4.1 plus 4 would be a negative 0.1. And on the bottom, negative 0.1. But here's the thing, since the top is an absolute value, it's going to erase that negative sign and I'll get a positive 0.1. Now, on the bottom, it still has that negative sign, so it's going to stay. The value of these, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, is the same. The only difference is that bottom is negative. So this would even continue to simplify and I'd get negative one as my answer. Now that works pretty good, what if I pick something even closer to negative 4 on that left side? Say, negative 4.0001. Well, what you'd notice is that same process plays out. We'd plug in the number for both of our x's, uh, you'd add 4 to it, and you'd get just the leftover piece. You'd still have the bottom negative, and the top would still be in an absolute value, which means you'd have a positive divided by a negative. Other than that, their values would be the same, and the result would be a negative 1. So I think what we're getting from uh, exploring all of this is that this piece of the function, as we start using our x as it approaches negative 4 from the left, will approach a negative 1. Now, as with the rest of the function, there's really no problem with that. I don't see any fractions that would give us a 0 on the bottom, so we could use just direct substitution to handle that part. All right, so let's write out what we got here. So if I directly substituted in that negative 4, I know the rest of this is approaching that negative 1. And now I can actually get the value of my limit. So negative 4 plus 7, that's a positive 3, times a negative 1. So it looks like the value of our limit is a negative 3. So you can see in many cases you can go through the process of a direct substitution, but be very careful in case you run into any problem areas. If you get zero on the bottom or if you get a negative underneath a square root, then examine it even closer to see exactly what values it's approaching around those problem areas, okay? If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.